welcome. First of all, welcome. This is Unsolicited Perspectives. I'm Bruce Anthony, your host here to lead the conversation in important events and topics that are shaping today's society. Join the conversation and follow us wherever you get your audio podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch our video podcasts. Rate, review, like, comment, share. Share with your friends, share with your family, hell, even share with your enemies. On today's episode, it's the Sibling Happy Hour. I'm here with my sis, Jay Andrea. We're going to be daily dadding a little bit, and then we're going to be talking about this Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef battle that's going on right now. That's going to take up the majority of the show. We got some interesting aspects of that. And then we're going to talk about braces. No, not the ones you wear on your legs or your arms, the ones you put on your teeth. But that's enough of the intro. Let's get to the show. What up, sis? What up, brother? I can't call it. I can't call it. Yo, check it out. We're going to start off Dilly Dallin with me reading. Yeah. Okay. You said you were going to blindside me with something. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm interested to see what this is. So there was an article that I found. I can't find where I found it from. Oh, Lord. But it is a real article. It's a news article, something that's happening in the news. Mm-hmm. And it's the title of the article is Wealthy White Louisiana Residents Split from Black Neighbors to Form New City. Okay. Okay. Yeah. After a long and intense legal battle lasting 10 years, wealthy residents in Baton, Baton Rouge, predominantly white, have emerged victorious in their quest to establish a separate city called St. George. The main goal of the residents in Baton Rouge who wanted to form St. George was to separate from the poor mostly black neighborhoods they believe that by doing so they could provide better schools and reduce crime rates the louisiana supreme court has made a decision and it is official saint george covering a 60 square mile area and around 86,000 residents can now officially separate from baton rouge with the establishment of saint george as a separate city they will have their own mayor own city council it's like a fresh start for their community, providing them with more local control and decision-making power. Supporters of St. George f- firmly believe that this was a move that was necessary because they felt that Baton Rouge had high crime rates and schools that were not up to par. They saw the formation of St. George as a way to address their concerns and create a safer, safer and better educational environment for their community. Those who support the formation of St. George believe that establishing a new city governance can make a real difference. They think that by having more control over local administration and decision making, they can work towards improving educational outcomes and overall community well-being. Now, critics have voiced concerns that the split could be racially motivated. Yeah, they worry that it may lead to a creation of a white enclave and further deepen racial divisions within the area. Critics claim the split between St. George and Baton Rouge could exasperate existing inequalities by separating a wealthier area from a majority black city and school district. They're concerned that the divisions may further widen the gap in resources and opportunities leading to more disparities. It, it goes into it all began about 15 years ago about the residents wanted to, to do it. I just wanted to give a quick synopsis of uh, of what what it is so um what do you think about that yeah i mean that's not surprising given the current climate of this country yeah Hmm. i'm gonna give a little devil's advocate okay because i that's what i do right Mm -hmm. not saying this is what i believe but that's what i do if right I, i know our father used to lament once he started climbing that social economic ladder mm-hmm. of how much more of his money were going out in taxes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, t- I said to him, dad, yeah, you benefited from people paying higher taxes when you wasn't making that money. He was like, yeah, but I'm making it now. So I see it from another perspective. Mm-hmm. And like, I got that. And I also get in communities where there is a division of economics, right. Where there is, a divide, there's wealthy, and maybe there's not even a middle class. Maybe there's just a wealthy and a poor. And you're all putting money into a pot, but some people are putting more money into a pot, but the re- but they're not getting the benefit of the resources. I can 
understand the position of, hey, look, I all, I put in money just like everybody else for this pizza. Why do I only get one slice when I'm hungry and I want to get two slices? That's natural human nature. Mm. I'm not saying that it's right. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that I agree that they should have split off and develop their own uh, city. All I'm saying is I can understand. I can understand their perspective. Yeah, that's all I can say about it. I can understand it. Yeah, I mean, we can we can understand it. That doesn't make it right. I mean, yes, I didn't say it was right. I said I right. understood it. So, uh, representatives from the Baton Rouge chapter of the NAACP sent out a statement. And they said, quote, we are deeply committed to safeguarding the well-being, education, and economic security of Black people and all persons of color in our city. The St. George Plan poses significant risks to our education system, threatens the continuity of critical programs, and challenges community representation. So they're not wrong. I mean, it is about money. Ultimately, it's, it's about the money. If they pull their tax dollars out of Baton Rouge, which they have just been given the green light to do. Mm -hmm. It's been a 15, it's been a 15, 10 to 15 year fight for them to do this. That is going to further decimate the economy and by extension, everything that the economy pays for all of the, you know, schools and hospitals and police and things like that. There's no longer that funding allocated to available to allocate to these programs. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, but also on the flip side, and once again, I'm not saying that this is what I agree with. I'm just giving a different perspective. If you are one of those wealthy individuals, mm -hmm. they could look at it and be like, why do I, why do I have to put it into a pot that I have no benefit in? That I that I really don't get the voting block in, and we're putting in the most money, and we don't we don't have the voting power to make the changes that we deem necessary, which is ultimately just control, right? That's all right. it is is control, right? They're saying, well, well, okay, so this is how it is. I'm putting in all the money. I don't have the voting power. I'm just going to start my own thing, and this is common in life. Right. Like this is the, we've seen this in businesses where, you know, you have two partners and one is getting all the credit while the other isn't. And, mm -hmm. and then one says, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to start my own thing. I, I, I understand that um, people are going to be affected by this policies and things. I'm looking at kind of a bigger picture. They've created a new district for voting. Yeah, let me guess it's going to be conservative votes. Uh, well, we don't necessarily know that, but let's just say it's wealthy Southern wealth. Typically. White Southern wealth. White Southern wealth. Typically, I'm not going to say this is, I don't know the demographics in this area. And Louisiana is a different animal all to itself. Yeah. Baton Rouge, New Orleans is a different animal all to, to itself. So we can say that just because they're white, rich Southerners, they're automatic. This, they're not. Alabama, Tuscaloosa, right? Like it's a, they're they're a different breed down there in Louisiana. However, if I remember correctly, the governor is still Republican. Mm -hmm. The House is still controlled. The the state house is still controlled by Republicans. Mm -hmm. Due to those examples, I'm going to assume that they're Republican, and I'm going to assume that this new city is now going to be a conservative stronghold that's going to affect state, local, and federal elections? I don't know, because it's still a red state. It is still a red state, but some of these red states are slowly but surely turning purple. Hell, Texas is almost purple now. Oh, we'll, we'll see about that. I said almost. Georgia <laughs> Georgia is almost purple. Jo we working, we working. Yeah, totally. you know, they so are these, not making it easy, but yeah, no. But I'm saying some of these southern states are, you know, it's, there's a turn happening. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it that is going to be a conservative block. But if well, I had to put money on it, I would say yes, it would. 
Well, one, I, I, first of all, I didn't get a chance to like do any prep on this. So this is just <laughs> me off the cuff. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, no, just off the cuff, ladies and gentlemen, I hit my <laughs> sister with it because before we came on, this came across my timeline. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. I didn't put it in a rundown or nothing. I do not blame the citizens of St. George. This is a Louisiana problem. Mm, okay. Because I think the main concern for a lot of critics is, is there a plan in place to help mitigate the damage that's going to be done by having this portion of the population annexed and becoming their own city or their own, you know, what, I don't think they what have was the Supreme Court, the Supreme, Yeah, the Supreme Court ruled on this. So they, yeah. they sold, I mean, they sued to, to get this. Yeah. So, but it's not their problem to mm. come up with the plan to help mitigate the damage. That's Louisiana's problem. It was, okay, but it was going to be the politicians in Baton Rouge and, and what they were simply saying in some of this lawsuit is they don't have the voting block to affect local governance like they want to to formulate a plan. And so they were just like, we're tired of this and we're going to form their own city. I just thought this was interesting. We don't have to do no deep dive mm-hmm. into this. I just thought this was interesting because I don't know what the right or wrong answer is on this. I can understand both sides. I can understand why you would want more more wealth in your district because that helps your district, especially if like you don't have a lot of wealth. I understand now. You're like, hey, my mm-hmm. resources is about to, to dry up here. Mm-hmm. That's when the state is supposed to come in and help mitigate that. But uh, I don't, you know, I don't know wh- what the plan is for Louisiana. I just thought this was an interesting idea. And are we going to see more of this? Are we going to see more of these white enclaves that that decide to form their own cities, have their own laws, their own mayors, their own city councilors, their own police force? Well, listen, that's not that's not. It's not like that's this is something unique to America. There are white enclaves, black enclaves, Latin not enclaves. legally, though. Yeah, I mean, no. Anytime black people have tried, uh, they were massacred and their this cities is, were burned down. This is true. This is this is true. So yeah, that's that. probably not going to happen in St. George, you know, because no, they I mean, are white. Th- also, uh, <laughs> that wouldn't happen nowadays. That wouldn't happen nowadays. Yeah, well, it, it, I, 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 uh, no, it wouldn't happen. And we still have sun downtown. So let's let's uh, act only like in, only in Canada. No, there are sun downtowns in the United States. I was in one. I didn't know it, but I was, and I got the hell up out of there. What? Oh, mm. okay. There are plenty of sun downtowns in the United States. What does sun downtowns actually mean now? Like you got to be inside. Everybody got to be inside. No, it means if you black, don't get caught around here after sundown. Because that's your ass. Okay. They don't have that legally on the books. You're talking like they have sundown towns theoretically. Yes. but No, not course. theoretically. They exist. But they're not, obviously, they're not protected by the government. That's, that's so, clearly racism. So, that, so that's what I'm saying is theoretically. Clearly, this is not clearly racism, though. No, 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 no. This, well, there no. Is, do we Do we, do real folks know? There is a racial component to this, yes. Yeah. When you start using words like safety and things like that, like I mean, we we know what you're talking about. Oh, but I, I can I say this? Mm. I, I don't want to really live near no poor people either. Mm. Well, you can unpack that on your own. Time, <laughs> no, but, no, like, <laughs> no, no I, I don't really want to live around. I don't really want to live around poor people. I don't care what what nationality or religion you are. I don't want to live around poor people. I don't really want to live around rich people either. I want to yeah. live around middle class people. I want to live around people like me, just like yeah. me. You know, keep quiet. Don't play with their dogs in the hallway. You know, stuff like that. All right. That's getting very specific now. <laughs> I don't like my neighbors. But, <laughs> but I think that's enough about this. I just wanted to get your your thoughts on it. Yeah, but, I think it's a Louisiana problem. I think Louisiana is going to leave Baton Rouge hanging. 
because it means pumping more state money into or possibly federal money into the area. And I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're going to do it. So I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. And uh, yeah, but speaking of sundown towns, I mm-hmm. do know that there are still some in Canada. And mm-hmm. speaking of Canada, there's an artist that's very, very popular from Canada that yes. I thoroughly enjoy. Mike Myers, yes. And I love <laughs> I love Shrek. I love Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Yeah. Uh, hell, I, I I even love the uh the love the love guru. It was terrible, but I loved it. I like I think I married an axe murderer. Oh, so I married an axe murderer. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Harriet. Sweet <laughs> Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> Mike yeah. Myers. Oh, yeah. yeah. But no, I wasn't talking about Mike Myers. And I wasn't even talking about Brett the Hitman Hart. Another oh, Jim person, Carrey. Uh, no, I wasn't talking about Jim Carrey either. I'm talking about a man named Drake. Aubrey Graham. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also known as Drake. Mm. And another man here in the U.S. named Kendrick Lamar. They got a little beef going on. I know this is a subject that you really want to talk about. Yes. And we're going to get into it in depth. Next, we got to pay some bills first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I I did my little intro. My little thing that I wanted to talk about at the beginning of the show was the article. Mm-hmm. This this is what my sister wants to talk about. No, this I, is what it, you want to talk about. No, 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 what everybody no, no. wants no, no, to no, talk no, no, about. No. I, I sent a message to my sister. Hey, what do you want to talk about? I knew, I knew what it was. I don't want to talk about this because I don't really think y'all out there want to hear what I have to say, because what I have to say, you're going to have to start to question yourselves and what you think. Mm. You don't want to hear what I have to say. I my do. Sister don't, my sister really don't want to hear what I got to say. I really but, do. <laughs> but, but we're going to talk about this. Yeah. Okay. But let me give people a little bit of backstory before we get into it, before I let you dive deep into what you want to dive deep into. Okay, mm-hmm. can I do mm-hmm. that? Yeah, pl- please. All right. Drake and Kendrick Lamar got a beef, y'all. Mm-hmm. The origin of the beef may not exactly be this, but this is when it became known to everybody. Kendrick Lamar's verse on Future and Metro Boom's album, We Don't Trust You. The verse was a response to Drake and J. Cole's song, First Person Shooter, where he referenced themselves as the big three of the rap industry, J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick Lamar, which, by the way, I don't even know why they, they would be the, the three the three uh, person in the rap industry. Yeah. I feel like Rick Ross has something to say about that. But we'll get into Rick Ross later. He, he definitely does. Yeah. And he's been saying it. Right. Well, no. Can, okay. So Kendrick Lamar's lyrics, I'm not going to get into the lyrics, but he definitely attacked him. He was like, basically, I'm paraphrasing. This is not no first person. This is a first person, not no first person shooter. It's not no big three. It's just big me. And he compared himself to Prince, saying that his influence to the culture will last longer than Drake's influence. Drake, you know, responded at a concert, basically was like, man, I ain't worried about this dude or whatever he got saying. Like, look, I'm going to do me. But he decided to come out with a diss track called Push Ups, in which he mocks uh, Kendrick Lamar hype, because, you know, Kendrick Lamar's little dude, Mm -hmm. uh, and his collaborations with Maroon 5 and Taylor Swift. I mean, if you're talking about somebody else looking for commercial hits and you do Maroon 5 and Taylor Swift, I mean... That's the pot calling the kettle black. But anyway, as I digress, uh, uh, Drake later dropped uh, another diss track called Taylor Made Freestyle, in which he taunted Lamar, calling for coward because he hadn't responded back yet on his diss track from Push Ups. And in that track, Drake used AI technology to imitate the voices of Snoop Dogg and Tupac. He later pulled it off of his Instagram because, you know, People mm. was saying you can't you can't do that. That's not that's, people. The estate, oh, right, right? The Tupac Shakur estate yeah. said, "Yo, take his name off." But then people in general was just like, "Yo, you about to cause a real problem in L.A." Because Snoop, like Snoop is a is a blood, and I think Kendrick is Snoop is a crip, and I think Kendrick is affiliated with the Bloods, but he's not a blood. 
but he's affiliated because he's from Compton in that neighborhood. Anyway, Mm -hmm. finally, Kendrick Lamar came out with a diss track. Mm. And you know what, Jay? I'm just going to let you take it from here. No, you. I want to hear what you want to. I'm just going to run down. No, you can run down wh- how you feel about Euphoria. Euphoria was the diss track that that Kendrick Lamar came out to Drake, and in the track he 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 criticized Drake's persona and his music. He accused Drake of being a scam artist. He criticized his fashion choices. He questioned the legitimacy of Drake's six pack. Criticized his discography, claiming that Drake doesn't have a classic record. He brought up his battle with Pusha T, saying that he didn't really go back at Pusha T, which is not true because he did go at Pusha T and Kanye West. But yeah, that's that's just what's going on. So, yeah. Jay, go ahead and tell me how you feel about everything that's going on between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Well, I'm going to be honest. Before the release of Euphoria, I ain't give a damn about none of this. Um, none of it. <laughs> I am not a Drake fan. I've never. I mean, listen, I, I I will bop to fancy, you know, like anybody else. Hotline Bling was great until it really wasn't, and then, uh, you know, Erica Badu came out with her remix, and that was even better. And so, you know, whatever. But all I know is. I, I I will say I'm not a Drake fan. I'm not a fan of him as a person. His- Ladies and gentlemen, y'all really should watch the video portion of this episode today because I'm gonna be making some faces. I just rolled my eyes just now. Yeah, because I don't understand people giving the way people give him passes. I don't know what passes he needs to be given for anything that he's done. You don't know what passes he needs to be given for anything that he's done. I, I would love, for, I would love for you to explain to me where he needs to be given a pass. I By don't way, think ladies, he needs to be given a pass. For what actions was he given a pass? Let me rephrase. For what you, actions was he given a pass? You know my main no, I don't issue know. with him. Yeah, it's and, the same and I've thing. discredited. I've, and just it's, like it's not discredited. No, it's not discredited. I, I, no, hold he on, comes hold on. Back, he, see, ladies and gentlemen, y'all about to y'all about to see the real. Y'all no, about to see no, the real. You tell, you tell me how you discredited my opinion. Go I ahead. didn't discredit your opinion. That's I didn't discredit your opinion. I discredited your argument. Your argument was that all he does is have smoke for women. And I've repeatedly given you multiple examples that anytime a male rapper has come out at him, he has attacked him in diss records. Yes, yes. Listen to what you just said, Bruce. He, any male rapper that comes at him, he has attacked them in diss records. Yes. That is fair. Okay. I'm saying he's got smoke for women who have nothing to do with him. What smoke? That okay, is my give me an point. example. Please give me an example. Megan the Stallion. Okay, and I've explained that to you why he you've had explained, smoke. You've explained why he has smoke, and I still don't think that that's relevant. I don't think it's enough of a reason because you know somebody who was involved with the not thing know that somebody was, that was his boy. Who gives a damn like that? It don't have nothing to do with you, and you got all this smoke for Megan, who has never said two words about you. Uh, hold on, stop raising he, your voice because the sound is 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 going up on the microphone, and well, we're going my, it's going to clip some sound. My my point is this: he has smoke for women who have done nothing to him. No, I that's don't not have true. a that, problem with him about, having smoke for people who have come at him. Like that's the game. Like that's the the business. That's the industry. You're right. supposed to clap back, sure. But you, first of all. <laughs> Listen, I don't like the video that he had where he had all these women's names on dog collars on dogs and he's dog walking these women. Okay, like, so say so you don't like his misogyny. Okay, I don't so like that, his misogyny. I don't Okay, well like, hold on. What's the difference between his misogyny and every rapper out there's misogyny? I don't like any of it. Okay. So so at least you're being clear. So you don't like Rick Ross? Hell not a like listen, yeah, he got some wing stops and I'll I'll you know, I'll go to wing stop from time to time because Depending on which one you go to, they got good wings. You but don't like Migos. Mm. I'm a, I was a fan of Takeoff. I really was. And they misogynist. Yeah. Okay, so so you have a double standard here. No. And and and, and, and let me ask you a question. If somebody did something to your friend, would you have beef with that person that did something to your friend? 
Yeah, but I'm not going to insert myself into you, that beef. There's, no, there's no. not circumstances in which you no. will insert yourself into the beef? No, unless I feel like it's a, like a physical altercation is about to go down and they can't handle it. You're not going to tell the other person how you feel about this, no, the situation if my, you run into them? That's not my... I know, I know, I know, I'm, for, I know I'm not going to mess with them. Like, I'm not going to mess with you. Like, you got beef with my friend. I'm not... So we're done. Like, Jay, we're done. I've done. known you in your history. Go ahead. To be, like, to be like, I don't like that girl over there. She got beef with my friend. Okay, yeah. I will say and that. Say but... it, and say it loud so the person can hear it. No. That, yeah, is never, I, that has never happened. Jay, wow. First of all, my sister when, only kind of wow, when, no. when have you ever been around me? First of all, I don't dislike anybody. I If I don't mess with you, then I just don't mess with you. Okay. If you have a problem with my friend or my friend has a problem with you and it's valid because sometimes it ain't valid, but if it's valid <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, if my friend is dead ass wrong I'll be like, friend, you kind of dead ass wrong you ain't, you ain't a ride or die no matter what No, like if I'm if, if, I, if I love you, if I'm your friend and I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth Alright, so in Drake's defense Mm-hmm. If he's listening to his boy and his boy is fighting for his life. Mm-hmm. Now, Troy Ivy was wrong and should be in jail because he shot Mega Stallion in the foot. But there was a lot of during the court case, there was a lot of I don't know if he really did it. Other people are saying that he didn't do it. And that's Drake's boy. So he's thinking Meg is lying because he's hearing it from his boy. You don't hear Drake talking about that now. But it didn't have anything to do with him. It, when your friend he, is about to lose his and, life? And your it didn't have anything to okay, do with him. Okay, we have different opinions of how we ride for friends. Because I can tell and, you right now. Here's the thing. Of, There's, I don't have no problem with him riding for his friend. Okay. You put it on a track and then release that track to the public. That's well, different. That You put it on a track and release it to the public calling her a liar. Yeah. And all this stuff. Nah. He don't have nothing to do with it. Okay, that's one thing. Can you give me another example? Oh, there's a whole a whole ass article on the Grio titled I don't know oh, what the Grio is. Is this a credible source? Yes, it is <laughs> it is a black owned news publication. That and, automatically doesn't mean that it's credible. Jet magazine they, they, has some uh piss poor articles that, that wasn't good sometimes. Yeah, you was really reading the Jet Magazine articles. You was looking at the Beauty of the Week. Knock it off. I dated the Beauty of the Week, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know. But it's it's, <laughs> anyway. it's called Aubrey's Lament, Drake's Escalating See, Anger the, Towards Women and the Media. It is, okay. an, it is an opinion piece. Right. Okay. Because I was about to say, that is slanted. That sounds like a hit piece already. Um, He came after Rihanna. Why? Because she didn't want to date him. He came after Esperanza Spalding. Why? Because in 2011, she beat him for we, Best New Artist for, for a Grammy Award. We already went through this before in a previous episode. Yeah. So, I mean, my, my point still stands. Like I don't he, know if your point he stands. Also, he also original- came for Serena Williams. Uh, he, call, he called her husband. Didn't they date? Didn't a, they date? Yeah, but listen. What? Hold on now. So you just saying your problem is that he's messy and he puts all his business no, out there. That's that, not my problem is he starts. Don't don't hit the don't hit the thing because that's going to reverberate in the sound or the audio. I'm assuming you, I'm assuming you meant reverberate. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> my point is he starts beef with women. He starts it. Does, he hold, starts it. Hold on. Is starting beef? acknowledging somebody has pissed you off the stuff he he continuously in his lyrics discredits women disparages women who what wouldn't give him attention or beat him for an award or okay. have literally nothing to do with him but he also does that to men who so come what, for him something no supposedly him, supposedly hold on man, hold on supposedly Supposedly, this whole beef is happening because Drake does a lot of sneak disses in all of his songs. Yes. So he got smoke for everybody. So if you're saying to That's yourself- That's not smoke. A sneak diss is never smoke. A period. sneak diss is even worse than a real uh, say it in your yeah, face cause, diss. because you're a coward. Well, okay. if your problem with Drake is like, okay, 
he's just not a good human being in your eyes. Okay, I'll take that as an assessment. But if your assessment is he's only got smoke for women and not for men, I, I, I've given you many examples of, of, of the point where he goes at men as well. You're still not listening to me. I am listening. <laughs> I'm listening either, and hearing he you. He either sneak disses people who don't start nothing. It sneak disses men who don't start anything with him. He either does that or he responds to men who have already dissed him. I don't know. I, think he, I think he went at Meek Mill immediately. I don't think Meek Mill started it. I think he started it with Meek Mill when he went at Meek Mill. And they warranted responses. No, no, no. I think he started the thing with Meek Mill. Meek Mill may have said something not on wax and Drake came for him on wax. Wax, yes. ladies and, and gentlemen, is you know like a record. That's an yeah. old school expression uh, that many MCs still use. I know because I used to be an MC, but let's move on. He will respond to men, but he instigates things with women. Okay. Period. I think he's instigated things with men as well, but on okay. a sneak tip because he's not always. I just gave you an example where it wasn't a sneak a sneak tip. I think he initiated the thing with Meek Mill. Meek, Meek Mill, Mill. Meek Mill started it with what he said. He may have said something in in the public, but he didn't say something on wax, and he made it official. And Drake made it official. Drake was like, "Nah, you're gonna say something. Here it is." Yeah, I mean, again, that's still a response. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so that, you don't that, like Drake. I don't. And you, I'm not did, a, and you not didn't a care fan. about this. So, no. what made you care? Uh, I like Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kendrick Lamar. You know, again, but still, like this has been going on for a, for like a little bit now, and I, again, I didn't, I didn't care, even though it involved Kendrick, and I am a Kendrick Lamar fan. I still was like, all right, this don't have nothing to do with me, and. Y'all not really making good, like to me, diss tracks aren't really like good music. Well, no, because we're yeah. used to, we grew up in the 90s where Tupac was saying, I had sex with your wife. Right. And and, and that's how the song started. So he yeah. said, he said, my fofo, make sure all your kids won't grow. I mean, that's right. <laughs> pretty yeah. devastating. Yeah. No, he, <laughs> sometimes Pac went, he, no, not sometimes. Pac went overboard. Let's We could just say that. Pac went overboard on a lot I'm, of stuff. And I don't disagree that Kendrick might have gone overboard. I don't think Kendrick went overboard. I think the stuff about his son, he might have. I think Pusha, Pusha, Pusha T went overboard with bringing that out in the first pace. It, place, not yeah. pace. I, ladies and gentlemen, my speech impediment is going to be really bad today because I told y'all this conversation was going to be animated. But Pusha T is the one who brought out his son, right? Yeah. So once that was brought out, I don't blame Kendrick for addressing that because he kind of had to. And he no. kind of just said, I, I, I'm pissed off at Kendrick for other stuff that doesn't have to do with that. But he, he basically insinuated that, not basically, he insinuated that Drake is a bad father. Like well, that's kind of been, that's what Pusha T said. He was like, you ain't even claiming your son. And he could have like, not been claiming his son or he could have been saying, yo, that's my son. I don't really want people to know so that he can maybe have a normal life. Not everybody needs to be Blue Ivory out here. Yeah, no, I get it. And, and Blue Ivy directs her own press. Okay, well, let's let's just be clear. I'm not that. saying I'm not <laughs> saying that Jay and Beyonce are bad parents. No, nah. but I'm also not saying if you don't want to have if you're a celebrity and you don't want to have your kid in the limelight, there's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, but I don't know the hundred percent. I think what they're insinuating, or what maybe Pusha T insinuated, is that it that was not the reason. And I'm okay. And I'm going to take my news report from Pusha T. I'm sorry. Right. And I have real problems with Pusha T. I used to be a huge fan of other clips mm -hmm. and uh, not a uh, clips, clips yeah. and, and Pusha T. But I got tired of Pusha T about round 07 because you ain't been dealing drugs since at least. 97 98 and i'm sorry you cannot still be talking about you the dope king in 2024 when you are 30 years removed from selling dope i don't want to hear it no more at some point you got to evolve nobody says that about jay-z and Jay -Z i think he sold drugs in the 80s 
Okay, Jay-Z, when's the last time Jay-Z made a drug album, American Gangster? And that was only because that was literally a soundtrack for a movie. He be Jay talking will, about Jay will mention, like, I used to sell drugs, but look at me now. Jay, Jay, don't, Jay don't talk about I'm still a kingpin. Yeah, but you talk about what you know. I that's the point I'm and, trying to make after yeah, push, 30 years but in the he, business. He, he ain't learn nothing else. <laughs> God. You got to learn something else. No, that's it. No, but I'm not taking my news reports on other people's lives from Pusha T. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's been wearing the same corn roll set since 2002. He I'm loves them. He I'm loves them. This that's a dude that will not change. He ain't he ain't yeah. aging poorly, so I get that to him. I mean, you know, that's kind of the story of just folks in Virginia anyway, they don't be, they don't be. No, nah, we be know some folks in Virginia that, that Talk aged. about you. No, I mean, I mean <laughs> about not about changing, not changing. I changed? I, hold on, I'm a completely different person than when I lived in Virginia. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, 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 oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, now. Come, on, come now. on now, come on now. I, I think Kendrick went too far in some other comments. What? That we'll get into in the next segment. It's in the rundown. All right. oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into oh, it. In I the thought next we step. were still in. I thought we were still in the first. Se- well, we're still in. we still in the, the in the first part because the, the the whole this whole part is your response. Yeah. To euphoria because you wanted to talk about this. Yeah. So I mean, you love that he got his comeuppance. Yeah, I loved it. I, I thought I I thought it was. Very well executed. He went line by line, like rebuttals to literally everything. The twenty v one thing. Uh, when when Drake said, "Every time you drop, you gotta you gotta give fifty percent," and Kendrick said, "Let's talk about percentages. Show me your splits. I'll make sure I double back with you." You were signed to a brother that signed to a brother that said he signed to that brother. Like, and and it's so true. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, Drake, yeah. Drake, I think is signed to Young Money, but his management group is Jay Prince's son. So he's got a lot of connections to Jay Prince, which is yeah. a which is a huge reason why people really don't mess with Drake. Because people do not mess with the king of rap a lot. Nobody messes with the king of rap a lot. And that is, he is Drake's boy because his son either manages or has some, it has a connection to Drake or discover Drake. He discovered Drake and passed the tape around. And then he was signed to Young Money under Lil Wayne. But okay, keep going. I'm I, sorry to interrupt. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, there's no problem giving people context. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. I, yeah, I, I guess that is my job. Yeah, I think that's, that's uh, pretty much the whole point of the show is that we're giving people context. <laughs> you know, some of my faves, some of my fave bars. Everybody want to be a demon till they get chipped by your throwaway, and like, even though this is like a s- almost seven minute song with three beat changes. He's just calling it a throwaway. Like, yeah, I didn't even. I, I think he did work very hard on it. Let's be honest, because this respon- yeah, this response no, took, he took his, time. Yeah, he took yeah. his time on this response, and it was so. He did I, some research, like he looked up line by line to refute everything. So what I did was is I had it playing, but I had the words because I was like, I need to read the words as I'm listening to the music because the music yeah. is not memorable. The right. beat is not memorable and the switches is not memorable. And that's the that's the knock that that he that I have to give him. And I give the nod to, to Drake. Not saying that Drake had a better diss track, even though I do think he had a better diss track because it's catchier. It's going to be played more like back to back when when he attacked Meek Mill. He Drake makes better music but kendrick's because he's a commercial Kend- artist i don't think he makes better music i think he makes popular music no no no. time out you could be a commercial artist but you d- that doesn't mean that you sell as much as drake and kendrick saying that he doesn't have a classic album ridiculous drake has classic records that if they play you're not a fan you don't like drake as a person yeah. so i don't it expect doesn't mean i haven't bopped to his music Kinky, I, liked, I, liked con- I liked control love me I mean, the accent was terrible, but I, I control. That's one of Drake's songs that I actually hate. 
Yeah, because the accent is just bad. It's I like, bad. Dr- my favorite Drake sound. Drake song is "Best I'd Ever Had," which is a song that put him on the map, mm-hmm. and "Shut Him Down." My, I can't use the word favorite. A Drake song that I can listen to. <laughs> I mean, I just can't say the word favorite. Like, I just can't. What's the name of that song? I don't know. Come Through. Got... Oh, yeah. Oh, Come Through is another one. That yeah. had, Once again, that album. That album was all right. Well, I don't know that it was no. a classic. A classic uh, rap album? Like Kendrick yeah. doesn't have a classic rap album. I don't know what he's talking about. He doesn't have a classic rap album. Yeah, I mean, that's classic up to... songs. He's got classic songs, but he doesn't have a classic rap album. Fact of the matter is... You don't who, think... I, I played Damn over and over again. Hold on. Who actually has classic albums? That that gets thrown around too much. A classic album is an album that you could pop in and listen to 95% all the way through. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 95% that, rating. That was Damn to me. Okay. Well, Drake's got a lot of albums like that. No, I'd be skipping. I probably listen to maybe two or three songs on every Drake album. Okay. Well, but damn, I played all the way through. To me, the only people that got classic albums over the last couple of years, Rick Ross got a couple of them. Rick Ricky got a couple of them. No, deeper than rap. And deeper than rap is one of my favorite favorite. Okay. Uh, albums yeah. like it's, that's a, just a, a rocker and then the one he came out with after that Lil Wayne got a couple of classics yeah I, got I, I, classics. I think you can put Wayne and Jay-Z in that yeah. list of and having classic Lauren albums Hill has the classic yes so classic she could not come up with a second album she yeah, I can understand it. that yeah because no. it's kind of like Thriller isn't Thriller is a classic because it sold the most. We're not gonna get into that Michael Jackson debate. We're talking Drake and Kendrick. You know, Lamar. songs in the key of life. We, yeah, we talk about classic <laughs> albums. You yeah, 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 yeah. Over yeah. Again. yeah. Before we get into this next segment, where I I want to attack the true heart of the problem that I have with not only some of the things Kendrick Lamar said about Drake, but some things that Rick Ross said about Drake. Do you have anything else to add? Just about the track itself. When you see, when I see you stand by sexy red, I believe you see two bad bitches. And that to me. (laughs) And then the next line, which perfectly encompasses my issue with Drake. I believe you don't like women. It's real competition. You might pop ass with them. And Wow. That of course is a throw is a is a line to me in reference to a line Megan the Stallion said in Hiss, whereas all these little rap ends so fraud, Xanax be their hardest bars. These ends hate on BBLs and be walking around with the same scars. That's another Drake diss because there is that uh, you know, rumor out there that his abs are surgical <laughs> are result I, of I, surgery i don't, I don't know, that know. You, if, i don't know that you can make surgical six-pack because if that was the case everybody would do it uh i don't know if he had a tummy tuck a uh, lipo i don't but, know but that doesn't have. give you a six-pack that but does, if you can have a surgery to give you pecs i don't know you can't have surgery to give you a false six-pack uh, this is, I'm not about to get into the, I don't the know kinesiology either, and, and the exercise the science of it and yeah, the, 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 the biomechanics of it. I'm not about to do that. I don't but, damn know. I just know. Some people misquote that line and say, when I see you stand by sexy red, I see two bad bitches. He's not. He said, I believe you see two yeah, bad bitches. Yeah, we, we got it. Okay. Yeah. All and right. I, I thought that hit hard. I thought that hit hard. I thought it was. I thought it was well done, and I thought I thought it was one of the better diss tracks that I've heard in a while. And to me, it not being a bop doesn't take away from it being an excellent diss track. For me, a diss track doesn't need to be a bop. It needs to be scathing. Like I remember, Remy Ma was it Ether? No, that was Nas that did Ether. Oh, Remy Ma did. We getting off topic. Just, just, just land this one home where you talking about. We don't have to. We don't have to look up the Remy Ma. Sheether, Sheether. It was, okay. it was Sheether. Like 
that was scathing. It did not have to be a bop, but she read the hell out of Nikki. Okay. And, and I and, don't remember it. So, And I feel like Kendrick did a great job with this. I mean, the best job to me goes to Megan Thee Stallion for his, because that was just a good song and a good diss track. Uh, and everybody got mad at his. So, but I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. And I, I don't know how Drake is going to respond to it. I don't know that he wants to. I don't know that he should, but that's the only way me and Joe Button agree. All right, Jay. This is my take from the whole situation. Here we go. Let's address the elephant in the room. Okay. When is when it's talking about this Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef, and and I'm, this is not going to be a long segment, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna wrap this up, and then we're gonna talk about braces, <laughs> not the one on your legs and feet, but the one around your teeth. I okay? don't think anyone's confused about that. No, no, people wear braces on their legs and their and their arm, an Nobody arm brace. It, it, we'll get into that. We'll, polio we'll into anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to have polio to have the leg brace. All right. Anyway, so in the Kendrick Lamar diss track, Euphoria, which we talked about ad nauseum in the last segment, mm-hmm. my sister brought up a lot of his disses. Mm-hmm. But one of the disses is that he criticized Drake's blackness and street credibility. He instructs Drake not to say the N-word, accuses him of faking for likes and digital hugs, suggests that Drake isn't fully embraced by the black culture. He also criticized Jake's fashion choices, suggests that Drake wears Tommy Hilfiger, a designer regarded dis- uh, trustfully in the hip hop community because, you know, Tommy was racist. No, he ne- that never happened. It really never happened. <laughs> well, that's the myth in the black community. Okay? Yes. That Tommy was racist. But but you're saying that it was not true. No. So we're on, here on Unsolicited Perspectives, you can wear Tommy Hilfiger again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, even, even Tommy said, because the rumor came out that he said it on Oprah. He's like, I had never even been on Oprah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Kendrick Lamar also questions how many black features Drake needs in, until he finally feels like he's black enough. Mm-hmm. Drake has a quest, has qu- responded to a lot of these attacks on his on his blackness through various interviews and one in the village voice drake opened up about people's comments on the skin tone he said i mean i'm so light that people are like you're white that's what i get more than anything people saying you're white you're not black he also addressed the light skin complex saying that it's that's a very american thing uh light skin and dark skin and that he doesn't even notice it that girls would be like oh you you speak to dark skin girls and he was like yeah of course i do why wouldn't i He's also talked about growing up biracial and the impact that this had on him. Mm -hmm. So my problem with everything that has to do about this is not only Kendrick has piggybacked off of Rick Ross attacking Drake's blackness with Rick Ross Mm -hmm. calling him a white boy. Let's be clear. Drake is mixed. His Mm -hmm. mom is white, Jewish, white, Jewish, white. Okay. Jewish. She's Jewish. That's not a race. She's white. Well, no, she's Jewish. That's and a religion. Jewish is an ethnicity as well. Yeah, but it's not a race. She's white. Oh, don't get me started on. The, come on, you know the definition of white is a definition created by Americans. Yes, and that it's a moving, sliding scale. We call her white. She's Canadian. They might not call her white. That's, okay, again, that's her nationality. Race, ethnicity, nationality, these are all different things. Race okay, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get into that. I don't want to get into that. Okay. Okay. His mom's not black. Mm-hmm. Fair? Yes. His dad is absolutely black. Yes. He's half black. Yes. And I'm getting tired of people in the black community moving this sliding scale on what is actually blackness, what is actually accepted as black. He's black. That yes. that is what it is. Yes. Okay. So I'm getting pissed off. At Rick Ross attacking his blackness. Mm-hmm. Now Kendrick Lamar talking his blackness, saying he's not accepted in the black culture. He is absolutely accepted in the black culture because I'm a fan of his. And I am. You black. Black 
I'm black, yeah. y'all, and yeah. I'm black, y'all, and I'm bliggity black, and I'm black, y'all. Listen, listen, now I'm we a not, proud we black not the, man. We're not the darkest, but we could trace our lineage back to but, enslavement. But I'm getting tired of that conversation. <laughs> yeah, that that we do that we talk about colorism in our own community. Yes, and that is a white supremacist ideology mm-hmm. that's been passed down to us, and we need to stop doing it because we discredit one another. Mm-hmm. By doing so, there's this idea that if you're light skinned, that you're soft as a male. If mm-hmm. you're a light skinned male, that's soft. If you're a dark skinned male, then you're hard. If you're a dark skinned female, you're not as pretty as a light skinned female, right? Spike Lee did a whole movie about this yeah. in school days that I implore everybody to go and watch if you want to get an idea of what we truly are like in our own community. And my and this second is all- favorite Spike Lee film. Yes. First one being Malcolm X. No, my f- the first one is Crooklyn. Uh, Crooklyn. Yeah, I knew it was going to be Crooklyn. Mm-hmm. It's a good movie, though. It is, but that we do, and and it's a learned behavior that we put these categories in. So because Drake is light skinned, what he's not hard. He's not hard because he's Canadian. Yes. Okay, let's that's, be clear. That's, that's that's the reason why he's not hard. But he never claims to be a thug. He doesn't rap about thug stuff. He doesn't rap about shooting or killing. He's rapping about women and partying. Mm-hmm. Now, the people that are attacking him, I don't got no smoke for Kendrick Lamar. I got plenty of smoke for Rick Ross, and yeah. I am a huge, huge fan of Rick Ross. Yeah. But Rick Ross constantly talking about, I'm the boss. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover, when he was a correctional officer. Right. He's, he's the epitome of faking it. If anybody should have been rejected by the black culture, it should have been him for lying about who he was on wax. But you can't really do that for rappers because the majority of them are lying about themselves. But this idea that Drake isn't being, I have a friend of mine, uh, a professor, he's black and he's light skinned as well. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't like Drake. And I'm like, why don't, why don't you like Drake? He ain't, he ain't for the culture like us. I was like, I don't understand how he's not for the culture when all he does is music for us. Because he's not, he's not American. And I think I get, I get the, the, uh, that idea of there is a particular camaraderie between black Americans. I mean, he's not American. So there is, there is a black American culture that we created that's born here when we say the culture, we're talking about that. And so a Canadian artist can, you know, come in here and and rap and participate and all of that and cool. But I get that kind of feeling of like, mm, there's still some sort of disconnect because he's Canadian. But I is it agree, I, because he's Canadian or is it because he's light skinned or both? I, I think it's because he's Canadian. But they're not saying you're not American. Rick Ross is dead ass wrong. Okay. But Kendrick Lamar isn't. Kendrick Lamar isn't. And now here's where you and I are going to differ because again, I, my major is in literature. So when I read the lyrics, I read them to comprehend what's being said. And what, <laughs> wait, like, wait. So I'm reading them for what? If I'm not trying to comprehend what's being said, like, what am I, I mean, reading them I for? I mean, I'm I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do an analysis from a different perspective. Okay, so th- yeah, say that. Don't say I'm reading to understand what was said. You right, just I'm reading. Gonna, I'm gonna say it, I said it wrong. All right, yeah. I mean, <laughs> thugs mess up sometimes. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep going. What he is saying in here is he's faking for likes and digital hugs. He said, I liked the old Drake. I don't like Drake getting tough. What he's criticizing when he says, I hate, I, 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 where he basically goes, runs down how he's a hater. I hate the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you <laughs> yeah. sneak this. I hate the women that you engage with. Like, I, I hate it. He's talking about this new Drake that he doesn't like. What new Drake? He said, I liked old melodic Drake. I, what is that? I, I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he acts tough. 
Okay. That's that's what he said. He's criticizing that. And what he's what he says is how many more fairy tale stories about your life till we've had enough? How many more black features till you feel finally feel like you're black enough? Till you finally feel like you're black enough? I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he acts tough. He's he is talking about this accent that he affects, this different way of dressing and walking and talking and all of these things. This is kind of fake persona that Drake has is cultivating. Because what Kendrick is saying is that Drake doesn't feel black enough. And that there may be some truth to that because he says he has a complex of, of like many people that are mixed have a complex of what am I? Yeah, so I get that. it's a real, that's a my real question, thing. My question to you is when we moved to DC, did you start using DC slang? Yeah, of course. Did you start listening to go-go music? Yeah, of course. So as you move into a but culture, but I didn't or, become a go-go artist. Do you know what I'm saying? But it, but but why couldn't you? If you enjoy, so only people f- from Washington D.C. can be go-go artists. No, but it's like okay, say go-go is kind of a bad example, but say it was no, like, it isn't. It's a perfect example because it has to do with music, and it's and it's. Of a certain area. Yeah. And I think that you have to have some cultural connection to that area to be a go-go artist. Like, I'm sorry. Like, people, you got to be from D.C. Like, I don't. I, you have to be from D.C. You have to not be have lived there. Here. Not, not have lived there. How are you going to be there? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There. Are we from D.C.? No. I don't consider myself from D.C. What do you consider home? I don't. But that's another discussion. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, I don't, that's not I don't true. really, had, I don't you, really consider had... myself that I'm from anywhere because we've lived several places for certain amounts of like I don't ever I don't really consider myself as being from anywhere. When somebody asks me, where are you from? I said I moved all over, but I've been here in the DMV for over 25 years. This is home. This is where I'm from. Yeah, this you infl- have. I have. Yeah. You've only been away for a little while. I've been away for a Almost a decade. God damn, has it been that long? Yes. I moved okay. here in 2015. The point I'm trying to make is, is when he, he's coming from Canada, but he's here in the mix of American culture. The idea that he wouldn't become part of the American culture when he's here living in it, being in it, mm-hmm. uh, it is ridiculous. He was immersed in young money. Yeah. Right? That was I Lil think- Wayne, Nicki Minaj, and uh, who's the other boy that may have had some some pedophilia in his background i mean drake but i i don't know that drake that's a that's come on no the uh, one that uh, the what stuff was the artist? him and millie bobby brown was weird okay definitely weird but there wasn't anything where like he and somebody else rid. somebody else had a bar and they were like you think you had 10 but you're in a but you like 11 that's a strange thing or something like that and i was like damn that's but sick. but who was the one that used to date uh kylie jenner Oh, T- Tigra, Tiger, yeah, Tiger. I don't know yeah. why I keep calling him Tiger. I did that yeah. earlier today. <laughs> All I'm saying is this idea that it, okay, so one, they're hitting a the soft spot because he does have a a crisis of his biracialness, and well, maybe there that's is, our opinion. I, we don't know if he has a crisis. He said, he said that he said it's had an impact on him. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I think if you talk to anyone who is bi or multiracial and grew up with like living in the the different cultures like not like I'm biracial but I've only ever been around black people like like not that but I mean the growing up with both cultures they will tell you because there are multiple americas and you're straddling the line of several different americas several different societies like that's going to have an impact on you yeah, that's, that's fair and I think what Kendrick is saying is when you fir- when you first got here your first couple of albums you know melody drake it felt like you were mo- closer to who you really are and what you're doing now feels disingenuous. And, and I disagree. I don't think that the, I'm actually a fan and I listen to his music and I don't think that there's anything disingenuous about him. I think that it's a lot of people looking at a, a, a light skinned Canadian and being like, don't talk tough. That's not who you are. And he doesn't really talk tough. What he's saying, what he's saying is what anybody would say. Don't come at me because I'm going to come back at you. 
Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but they, I, I want to disagree I mean, that, Kendrick, that Kendrick, is, I don't think Kendrick says anywhere in here that he's not black enough. I don't he says think the he, culture doesn't accept him. He says black culture does not ex- embrace that's, you. That's not what he said. Yeah, he says, he says I, hate the, I hate the way you walk. I hate the way you talk. I hate the way you dress, all the sneak diss, all that stuff. And then he says, and notice I said, we, it's not just me. I'm what the culture is feeling, feeling in terms of what Drake is doing. This persona how, that he's crafting is disingenuous. Okay. So how is that? If he's talking about we, the culture, the black culture is, how is that not saying the black culture does not embrace him? There's he's he's not he didn't say the black culture doesn't embrace you. He said they're the, saying oh, he said I'm, we as in the culture. Yeah, I so am what culture the culture is, he is I'm what the culture is feeling. They're okay. not saying that he's not embracing, but the but the vibe is if the vibe is they're not feeling disingenuous about the, so Jay, what he's if the doing. vibe is them not feeling it, then that means that they're not embracing it. No, not true because his album sales are clearly showing that that's not the case. Album I, sales let, is listen, not an indicator hey. of if you got influence in the black <laughs> culture because Eminem has the greatest number of album sales, and there are still some people in the black community that doesn't want to put him in one of the top MCs. So that 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 album sales is not an indicator. Well, I and I absolutely agree with you, and so I would challenge you to explain to me in what way he is having an impact on the black community who drake yeah if if we're if album sales are not an indicator well record plays and streams and like what plays on the radio is a true indicator right and so 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 he's in the culture yes and kendrick Kendrick is saying saying that the vibe is what the culture is feeling is that this new direction Feels disingenuous. All right, you, 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 but, uh, are, you, you but, are moving the goalposts. I'm on not. This, I'm not. You I, I guarantee. Listen, Rick Ross literally said, "You ain't black enough. You a white boy. You just that." That's he's dead ass wrong. He's Rick dead, is really wrong. Dead ass wrong. And that hurt my heart because I'm like, bruh, I don't know if I can be a fan of yours because here's where here's you're where alienating my argument your biracial fans. First of right. all, <laughs> not that. Not that. Where does the line go for Rick Ross? Because if he's saying right. that Drake is a white boy, and if Kendrick is saying, stop pretending to be something that you're not, which is basically Black American culture, then we have to question under those arguments. Mm-hmm. I still don't think uh, that's what Kendrick is saying, but go ahead. Okay. But I'm, I'm listening. Under those arguments, we have to question one of the most important Black figures in the last 25 years in American culture, Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. He was a person, biracial, yeah. was not raised by a black family. No. He didn't get in, he didn't get touched by the black culture until he got to college. And when he is an adult. And similar to Drake. And another important distinction is that he is not a descendant of enslaved peoples. So but he's of the culture. Yeah. I, I didn't say Drake isn't in, of the culture. What he is saying is the culture is not feeling this new direction. Okay. This new well, direction I, of I, you going and, and ranting at your concerts, talking about nobody can mess with me and da, 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 da. Like, but mess with him as in what? He's talking about mess with him as an MC. That's the reason why he said that they are the big three. Him, J. Cole and Kendrick, which once again, I don't agree with no. them being the big three. No. But that's what they're saying, that they the best three MCs right now. No, not as long as there are still other MCs that are alive and well. Well, like, fact of the matter you know. is, last I checked, Eminem is still rapping. Last I checked, Jay-Z will still come out with a song every now and then. Every last now and I then. checked, Na- Nas will still come out with a song every now and then. Every and now when and he then. ain't playing the flute, Andre 3000 will drop a bar or two. Every now when and then. When he ain't playing the flute. Anyway, so I just, to me, I think I your point I, is valid. I think your point is, def- I mean, this is a, definitely a conversation that is is in the is continuing in the black community and needs to continue in the black community. This and a lot of communities this issue with colorism and devaluing black, like devaluing people's blackness just because of their proximity to another race. Like that's save that. Yeah. 
I think Kendrick is saying something different. All right. Well, as you said, you was a you was a linguist and and you read for understanding, and I just read to read. I mean, <laughs> shut both, up. <laughs> we both. I mean, we both gleam different things from what you right. was written. So you right. You right. I'm I'm just reading it from this perspective. I'm I'm not reading it like oh, this is a song. It's a bot. I'm re- it's words I'm on reading the page. It, I'm reading it d- literally. Right. I'm, I'm reading it literally. What's the what's he really trying to say here? And well, that, I think that's what's when clear, my opinion goes into it. I'm just reading what no, he says. I'm reading what he says, and it's clear what he's saying. I okay. don't like who you're becoming. Yeah, he. I mean, I, just just a, I've never heard a diss track that actually says, "Yo, I like some of your songs." Yeah, I like that song. I like this song. I'll get back to that. <laughs> and yeah. So I mean, it was a diss and an acknowledgement at kind of. Yeah. He was, but also he said, "I don't like nothing about you." <laughs> so that it was weird. But, nothing about who you're becoming, who you are. Okay. This, this yeah. new Drake. He was like back to back. I love that track. I mean, who don't like back to back? Yeah. Great. All right, I'm tired I'm of talking get back about to this. Back. I'm 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 I'm, get, I'm tired of getting talk to, talking about this. I just yeah. thought that the conversation isn't these disses back and forth. The conversation is why are we questioning Drake's blackness? And that's that's what I'm appalled by because yeah. I'm in group chats and some people are saying the same thing, and I'm just like, you know what? We need to really stop this. Yeah. But now, if you want to talk about, is there a difference between Canadian blackness and American blackness yes. and how it's received and thing, all of that, that's a real conversation that we that's have. Real but have. to discredit or or um, devalue his blackness because his mother is white, y'all, we can't, we can't do this no more. No, we, we got to stop. But you know what else we got to stop? Let's talk about braces. <laughs> That's not, that was not a segue. <laughs> no, it wasn't, but I just needed to get off this subject and just, I want to hammer home this one thing before we get off the air here. Okay. 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 When do you just say to yourself that you're not going to put braces on your teeth? When? Yeah. Like what age? Not what age, a, a circumstance. Oh, when? when my teeth are dentures. Okay. Other I mean, than that, I don't think, anytime. I don't think you, I don't think you need them if yeah. you dentured. Yeah, exactly. So anytime before that, it's fair game. If my teeth are crooked, nah. Put okay, them- so I was in the grocery store earlier today, mm-hmm. and I'm waiting in line, and I look over, and these two ladies are talking. One is being, like, hyper um, enthusiastic with yeah. her speech. Mm-hmm. And as she's being hyper enthusiastic with her speech, her mouth is open and wide. Mm-hmm. And I notice that she has braces. Yeah. But I also notice... That what are those four front teeth that you got here in front? Your canines? No, the canines are in the back. No, the canines are right here. Oh, uh, okay. Well, the four front teeth. You got your yeah. two front teeth, and, and then, then those the, two teeth right yeah. next to the two I, front teeth. I, I'm not a dentist. She's, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is, and I'm sure people on YouTube are gonna correct us. We don't know. We're not a dentist. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's missing some of those, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? Maybe you should. Get a filler before putting them braces in. Was she missing the teeth or did she yeah, have she was, a very large gap? No, 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 no. She's missing the teeth. Okay. And still had yeah. braces. Okay. And still had braces. And I'm like, you know what? Forget them braces. I almost cussed on here, ladies and gentlemen. Forget them braces. Mm-hmm. Get that insert. Well, again, we're not dentists. So this might be step three in a, in a seven step process of getting her mouth together. Okay, the process of wearing braces is to put your teeth in no. to make them straight. The process is or to, straighten, to uh, straighten them. Straighten them, right, yes. to straighten them. Yes, okay. so maybe she has to do that first before she can get the bridge work done. That the oh. bone was too, the, the teeth are too jacked up and I, she I, got no, her straight I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know I a don't know. I'm I've known a, a lot dentist. of people. I've known a lot of people that, that have gotten teeth pulled and had to get teeth in and had grafts and bone shades and all types of stuff. Okay. I'm not a dentist. I don't It doesn't know. make sense from a practical standpoint. Okay. If if you know you got a hole in the wall, but you also got to replace the whole wall, mm-hmm. you're going to patch up the hole 
first before replacing the whole wall. Well, not not if you're replacing the whole wall. If you're replacing the whole wall, then you're not going to patch up the... So that's not a good analogy. That was a piss poor analogy, ladies and gentlemen. I would rewind by my leaving in. Yeah, that, that just wasn't good. You but tried. you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like if you you if if you got sliding doors, mm-hmm. right? You're gonna replace the sliding door before you do any of the framing. You're not gonna do the framing and then put in the sliding door. You're that's gonna just exactly have to do the framing do. again. That's exactly what you do. You do the framing first and then you insert the door. That's exactly what you do. That don't make no sense to me. It seems I, like where you, the hell are you gonna put the door if the framing ain't up, Bruce? No, no, no. The framing is there, but the framing is there. Maybe it's just you know. I'll tell you what it's like. <laughs> okay, yeah. Please tell me because my analogies are the worst. A Christmas, a tree <laughs> fell on my house. Okay. <laughs> yes, a tree did fall on your house. It damaged my roof. Yeah, her roof. No, but it also damaged the structure underneath my roof. It damaged okay. the frame of the house. Okay. Before they could repair the roof, they had to fix the frame first. That's that, but okay, that's different. No, that's different I than what I'm talking about. I think before they could do all the dental surgery required to give her new front teeth, they had to fix the underlying structural problem first. That's a possibility. And I, it's also uh, possible that she didn't have parents like us that could have <laughs> got her teeth together when she was young. But, but, and now she's in a position in her life and in her career that she can take this money and put it towards something that, boy, it has veneers. been eating away at her. Veneers. That's what oh, she should have put it she towards. Want her, she going to have to get them. She missing the teeth. She going to have to get them. So why would you why would you straighten teeth to put veneers? In? I, look, she don't want a whole mouth of veneers. That's extremely expensive. So she's but, just going to put one a tooth veneer? If she's, even, miss, if, she's missing those, if she's missing them four, she would just get that four replaced. She's not missing four. She's missing one of the four. Are you sure it wasn't a large gap? No, it wasn't a large gap. It was on the side and it was a missing tooth. I know a missing tooth when I seen a missing tooth. Just because your tooth was, missing don't mean the rest of them can't be straight. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's the point I'm trying to make is like, what? look, fix that tooth first and then straighten the teeth. She doing what Let me the ask doctor you, what you do? told her to okay. do. Okay, I don't believe the doctor told her that, and I'm going to talk they to the Dennis. one that put the. There's a Dennis. There's Dennis that live in my building. Go ahead. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk to talk her to ass her. this mm-hmm. week, and I'm going to ask her the question. Ask her. And I'm going to be like, "Look, and I bet you, you missing a tooth. Do you put the tooth in first and then straighten your teeth, or do you straighten your teeth and then put the tooth in? And she's going to be like, "You put the tooth in first and then straighten your teeth." I don't think so. Well, we you gonna must, see. You gotta get the teeth straight before you even know what size tooth to put in there. What if they put in a tooth that fit in the big crooked space, but then once her teeth shift to getting straight, the tooth is too damn big now. Okay, that's a point, but I'm sure they would. Uh, I don't know. I think Look. you're being judgmental. <laughs> I am being judgmental. I'm and like I think fixing you're the tooth being first. A hater. I don't think I'm being a hater. I, I think mean, I like she's it. following. The oral surgeon or orthodontist advice and doing I think that orthodontist the running game on her because in two years when it's all done, no, no. she gonna be smiling it's not, it's and you ain't a, gonna be able to tell her nothing because she knows she talks animated, yeah, and her whole animated. mouth be open and all she's of tired that. of talking to people with a hand over her mouth. And look, she's tired let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The orthodontist is running game on her. That's what I know. No, you don't get to sit. <laughs> And your little ivory tooth tower with your straight teeth. <laughs> They're not all straight. With none of them missing it. because I got a missing tooth. So hey, I, stop, I know stop, what. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. <laughs> Knock on wood. Don't don't jinx me like that. I I'm said I, I got right, a missing but, tooth. But, but you said with all your missing teeth. Knock on wood, damn it. You're not about to jinx me. You know I'm vain. I'm not trying to miss no teeth. And you know how much a tooth costs to put in? Yeah, it's at so least you, two grand. So you hate. So look, she could she could get the braces. That's a, how much you think braces are? She ain't got with no her insurance. Line. With her insurance? Well, I don't know. She looked like she she did look like she had a good government job. Exactly. She looked like she had a good she government finally, job. She finally got that good government job. And she said, "You know what? All my life, my teeth, <laughs> I feel like have been holding me back. All my life. All my life, I had to fight." <laughs> to get people to look me in the eye and not in the mouth. 
And so I'm finally going to do something about it. And here your ass go. Yeah. And look, she shouldn't have been so animated with her mouth all open. Ma'am, if you listening, you do your you do your thing the way that Dennis told you to do it. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. This, and don't this... listen. Don't listen <laughs> to some judgy, straight tooth jackass with a microphone. <laughs> Y'all you know go out I'm there, y'all get y'all braces, y'all get y'all invisible line, whatever y'all need to do to feel more comfortable in your own skin, do it. And don't listen to people at the Harris Teeter. <laughs> no, I wasn't even the Harris Teeter, it was the Aldi. Oh, that's even worse. Don't listen to people at the Aldi. <laughs> telling you, you can't speak animated just because you missing a tooth and got braces. On that note, ladies and gentlemen. You brought it up. <laughs> on that note, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And until next time, as always, I'll holla. Whew. That was a hell of a show. Thank you for rocking with us here on Unsolicited Perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Now, before you go, don't forget to follow, subscribe, like, comment, and share our podcast wherever you're listening or watching it to it. Pass it along to your friends. If you enjoy it, that means the people that you rock with will enjoy it also. So share the wealth, share the knowledge, share the noise. And for all those people that say, well, I don't have a YouTube. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch our video podcast but the real party is on our patreon page after hours uncensored and talking straight ish after hours uncensored is another show with my sister and once again the key word there is uncensored those are exclusively on our patreon page jump onto our website at unsolicitedperspective.com for all things us that's where you can get all of our audio video our blogs and even buy our merch and if you really feel ingenuous and want to help us out you can donate on our donations page donate go strictly to improving our software and hardware so we can keep giving you guys good content that you can clearly listen to and that you can clearly see so any donation would be appreciated most importantly i want to say thank you thank you thank you for listening and watching and supporting us and i'll catch you next time audi 5000 peace